So the background worker that we're gonna use is called Sidekick. So we'll run bundle add Sidekick. And this is definitely the most popular background worker service. You will need Redis to be installed so that it can use the Redis database to store jobs as it's processing them. So if you don't have that installed on your Mac, you can run brew install Redis and that will take care of installing it. And then brew info Redis will show you the commands to start it up. And I use this brew services start Redis so it will uh, start as soon as I log in. And that's the easiest way to use Redis. Now, if you're on Mac or Windows or uh, Linux or Windows, there's other mechanisms to install that for your operating system and you can read up in the docs on how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. So once you have Sidekick installed, you can actually run Sidekick as a separate process. And you will see in here now the logs for your background jobs. But first we need to configure our Rails app to send background jobs, not to Rails, but to Sidekick instead. So we can do that by going into config, environments, development.rb, and at the bottom we add config, active job, Q adapter equals Sidekick. And that's it. And we wanna add this to production as well. The reason we don't add this to the test environment is that in the test environment, we actually wanna intercept the jobs. We may not want to run them. We may just wanna know that they get queued up and we might want to run them when we choose and make sure they produce the right results. And so we want a little bit more fine grained control and we want it to be within the test suite, not in a separate process. So with that done, we can go into a rail server, restart that, and we will be good to go. And it will start putting jobs on the Sidekick queue. Now we can open up the Rails console to test out our logic and make sure that it all works. We have quite a bit of going on here. So if we say tweet job dot perform later, we can give it a tweet, say our last tweet, and we can run it immediately. This will queue up the job and give it over to Sidekick, which you can see just ran a tweet job and it ran in 0 0.003 seconds. That's very fast. Um, and that means that probably it didn't post to Twitter. We can open up our Twitter account and see if there is a new tweet or not. And we only have that hello world from an hour ago, not something a few seconds ago. So this is where debugging can be a little bit tougher. And that's why I wanted to take a minute to show you how to do some debugging. Ruby now has binding.irb, which you can use, but there's another tool called bybug, and both of these will stop the process from running, and you can actually poke around at the variables as if you're running right inside of this code. And so what we can do is drop a binding.irb in here, and we can reload our Rails console, and we can try the same thing before, except we're going to use perform now. Perform now will run in this Ruby environment. It's not gonna send it over to Sidekick and that will give us easy access to the IRB session where it pauses our code. So our tweet we have here, let's check and see if we got the right tweet. We have hello world two, publish ad is set to a timestamp, tweet ID is nil. So we can go through our code and kind of see whether or not we've written this correctly. So we can check if tweet is published and we would expect this to be false and it is. And then our tweet publish at timestamp is Friday 31st of December 2011 or 2021. And that is way in the future. And so we have the wrong year here. And if we were to run this, what we'll get is true. And that is because the publish at is a year in advance and that is incorrect, so this job is going to say, okay, that's a year from now, we don't need to run now, and we're not gonna do it. And uh, that is where we can kind of poke through and figure out, is our data correct? Is our job logic correct? And we can use um, binding IRB or bybug to make that easier. And I use this constantly to test my logic and data. So when you're done, you can type exit in bybug or binding.irb, to move back into the code and let it continue running. And we'll see it performed the tweet job, but it didn't do anything. There's no new tweet. And that's because our tweet is scheduled for next year. So let's move it to 2020. 
Let's go to December 31st, and we are at 53. So if we go to 54, we can schedule our tweet. And when it turns 154, it should post that job and run it. So let's go and look at our sidekick terminal, and we should see that a new one comes as a minute or 154 arrives. And there we go, we have our job running, but I accidentally left the binding IRB in here, and so it is running that, and we have to type exit for it to finish. So our background jobs, we don't generally want to have binding IRBs or buy bugs in them because it will pause processing of the jobs. So we can just type exit and it will finish. Now, if everything went correctly, we can refresh our page and see now we have view tweet. So it must have created the tweet correctly. And there we go. So that is now scheduling these to run in a background worker. We can have thousands of users using our app, sending background jobs to Sidekick, and it will continue processing those because it's extremely, extremely fast. So this is a really nice way and something you will use in production for just about every app. I use Sidekick in almost every single app these days to power my background jobs.